Welcome to Creatively Using the Create Suite. Here's your host, Eric Burnskill. Hello, welcome to the Creatively Using the Creative Suite podcast. My name is Eric Burnskill, and today I'm inside of Photoshop, and I want to show you um, an old goodie effect called the cutout effect or an out of bounds effect. And basically, this effect means that you t take a part of an image, turn it into you know, an image with a frame or a drop shadow or something. And then you have part of the image sticking out, uh, out of the boundaries of the image. And it almost looks like you're, you know, you're punching through, making it bigger, right? So what I'm going to start by doing is double click on the background layer if it's locked to unlock it. Click OK. And this means I can edit that. Then I'm going to create a new layer below this original background layer. And to do that, I'm just going to hold down my Command key on the Mac, Control key on the PC, and click the New Layer icon, and it's going to create that new layer. The next thing, I'm going to fill that with white. So as long as I have my foreground background's color set to the default, in this case, white's my background color, I just click Command and then the Backspace or Command Delete in order to fill this with white. So I've got a white background. What I'm going to do from here is just remove a little bit of this image that I don't particularly want. So I'm going to select what I do want. Okay, so I'm going to, and this is going to be something like this, which I want to to use as my image. And I can even go ahead and and this needs to include the out of bounds effect, right? So something like this. So I'm just going to inverse the selection. By going to select inverse or using the keyboard shortcut, just hit delete to get rid of this and I can deselect. So basically this is the image that we're going to be working with today. So in order to begin this out of bounds effect, what I need to do now is start by adding a layer mask to this layer. And what I'm going to do is also select the, load the entire layer as a selection by holding down my command key on the Mac, control key on the PC, click on the layer thumbnail. It's going to load what's on the layer as a selection. What I'm going to do now is switch to my rectangular marquee tool, hold down my Alt or Option key, and it's going to switch to a little minus, and this means we're detracting from this image. So I'm going to do a couple of things here. First, I'm just going to do a little on the top, and I'm going to do a little on the side. So I'm reducing, this is going to be my what's in the frame, and then I can have the flag sticking out beautifully. All right, so what I'm going to do now, of course, is I'm going to fill this with black, All right? So, whoops, sorry, I don't want to fill this with black. What I want to do is inverse this selection. So Shift-Command-I on the Mac or Shift-Control-I on the PC, and we can now, using Option Backspace, uh, depending on if it's your foreground or background color, uh, I can now fill the rest with black. Okay, so I have the image itself now showing. So what I want to do is, is just do a little selection here off the main image. So I shouldn't have deselected here. If, if you go ahead, select this again, and right-click, intersect mask with selection in order to get the same selection here, what I want to do is just click Command-J on the Mac, Control-J on the PC to make a new layer via copy, which is just copying what I had selected to its new layer. So basically, I now have just him on a new layer. On this layer, what I want to do is I want to right-click, choose Blending Options. I'm going to add a drop shadow to this layer. And I'm going to keep distance to about zero pixels. Let's set the size to about 10 and drop the opacity down quite a bit. Maybe drop the size down to 7. If you'd like, increase the spread just a little bit here. All right, so I think it's looking very good. I can click OK. And then what I finally do is move this mini layer below the layer mask layer. Now, to get the, the flag to show outside, what I'm going to do now is work this mask a little bit. So I'm going to select the mask by just clicking on it, making sure it's got a little outline around it. Select a brush, and choosing sort of a middle range brush, let's start with 50 
pixel harden or size here. And I can also use my bracket key, left and right bracket key, to increase or decrease the brush size. So I'm going to show now. So I'm going to paint with white on the mask to show, reveal. And I'm just going to do a rough paint over where I think the mask is. Okay, so now obviously this is too much of, of an effect. It doesn't really go well with the effect. But what I can now do is go ahead, paint with black instead. Click X to switch between foreground and background color. And also using shift and my left right bracket keys and I can increase the hardness of this brush. I can get nice, tight and close in here. I can also zoom in. And I want to make sure that, that I do a pretty good job here because the better job I do now, the better the outcome. So I'm just going around the near flag edges first and foremost. And given that flag's kind of a wavy thing, it's just going to take a little, little concentration here. And so now you do much better a job when you're not under recording stress. So I'm just doing this fairly quickly. And this is going to help if you have uh, some sort of pressure sensitive tablet. It's going to do go much faster, much easier. All right, so here we have it pretty much. We have our flag just breaking through out of bounds out of this guy inside the frame. And I can even go further by adding, let's see, an inside stroke here. Let's say five pixels, do it white. And I, what I want to make sure now is that I also hide here, whoops, wrong paint, as that I also hide a little more on the frame in order to get the, f the, the white frame showing through here. So it's a really nice effect, uh, helps you, is useful for all sorts of cool things. Just having part of an object pushing through that frame can create good impact and a good visual. So that's it for this week's episode of the Creatively Using the Creative Suite podcast. My name is Eric Bernskild, and I'll see you back next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>